Hello, okay, we're back. Uh, next session, really looking forward to this. The wonderful Carl B is gonna be doing a track deconstruction, showing us what he does. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Thanks. Um, welcome to my breakdown masterclass for the, my track Pacer, which was released on Yours Vaughan label Green. Uh, it was charted in the top 20 in Beatport, supported by everyone, basically, by Solomon, Yours Vaughan, Digweed, Sasha, and the whole lot. So this track, basically, is one of the simplest tracks I've done. Um, doesn't has too much going on, but um, it's really effective, and it's one of the main tips I would like to give today. Just keep things simple. So, basically, I start. I always start um, my projects with a loop, just to keep the, just to go, just to keep the flow going and feel. Just to write the melody. I started off with obviously a kick. It's a basic sample from machine, and I exported it to make an audio so I don't have to go inside the machine just to, if I had to mute it or, or anything like that. I write my drums, I always write my drum ideas into machine first just to take the feel going and this is the machine So by this time, I start adding the samples into a machine. I see how I can create a solid groove just to write the bass line over my drums. Then, obviously, there's a lot of sounds inside machine in which I eventually exported each and every sound in its respective channel, which after this, we will go into the arrangement project. This is just the initial part. I always start my tracks doing the solid loop first, just to have the foundation of the track solid from the beginning. However, most of the time, I just change things as I go along with the arrangement. Next, it's bass line. Again, a simple bass line just to have the groove going. very simple. This was created with a Moog Sub 37. I just kept the arpeggio going and I just chopped a part that I felt fits to the groove with the drums. I want to, I, I remember myself that I wanted the bass line to be more, has to have that more of a low end in it. So I doubled it and EQ'd it for more low end. So this is basically the same. This is the same as this, but EQ'd differently. As you can see, I kept only the I kept only the low part in the EQ. I always cut in between 30 to 40 hertz just to leave the space for the kick. And I used also this. R bass from waves that boost that boost only the the low end. You can choose the frequency range from up there. Next bass line, I to I just doubled it up. I topped it up for more groove elements, and I use sub boom bass for that. So I have the a solid groove going that fits with the drums. So by, by now I have a solid low frequency foundation of the track, which basically was enough um, so I can start writing melodies and uh, adding more percussions and stuff. 
I had this percussion going on, like I felt that it, the groove needs some more mid-range. So I added sounds like these. I added this as well. These are very, this, these you can barely hear them in, in the groove, but um, you can easily see the difference. You can hear the difference if you don't include them at all. So I always double think if I had to remove things, but um, I try to keep less is more rule in mind. So it's better there to make a more solid groove basically, um, rather than remove things completely. So next up, I wanted to come up with the, with the melody. And initially, the idea to... First, the melody was like this of Pacer, not how it is today. But it was... It was like this. From here, I got, I got the inspiration to write the actual melody, basically. Then, I had, I said, I felt that I wasn't really happy with this, so I wanted, I wanted a different melody that makes more things more dramatic in a way that it can evolve throughout the arrangement because I couldn't, I couldn't see myself evolving the track around those steps. So I came up with this melody here. You're hearing the melody quite flat until I used one of my favorite plugins called Echo Boy from Sound Toys. And you can hear that space. So this is basically from this stage onwards, it was, I knew that it's all about um, the arrangement. So I went this is very simple. I left also the, the velocities, how I play them on the MIDI keyboard. So I left also some swing on it, not fully quantized, just to have that human feel and more space and have better for the groove. I feel that if you quantize, if you quantize the sounds and you leave all the, all the velocities all the same, you're going to lose some dynamics and uh, humanization, we call it, in the tracks. And I think those organic feels what is what makes the, the music uh, better. So from now, we have to switch. I, went, I created the arrangement. I'm going to open the arrangement now. where I created all the sounds and started building with the break, automation, and everything. So, as you can see, I used all those drums I created into machine, but I kept only a few, just because I wasn't so, I wasn't that happy with the with the groove, I thought that I have a lot of sounds as soon as I exported all the sounds from machine. And uh, I kept only the kick and some hi-hats. I kept only, like I have three high elements and the kick. I kept the same bass lines. I used this perk. I chopped it up. It's 
basically I used the sampler of Ableton, which I imported a sample in here. I didn't use the, the full sample, I just used one percussion just to create the extra groove. I use the same bass line as the other, as the initial loop, doubled, and the sub boom bass. So, I use some percussions as well in the loop that is this a closed perk, which you can barely hear. But again, it's very effective in the groove. I tend to group everything, the bass together, so I can, the bass together, the high frequencies together, as uh, I name them as tops. So I have the full control when I'm doing the arrangement, just in case I need to make the arrangement uh, just in case I need to make the automation, I can filter out all the mid frequencies and boost only the high frequencies, um, uh, lower the volume of the bass line. So as long as I have a lot of low frequencies, a lot of different bass lines in there, I, can, I tend to group them all and use one sidechain, one filter, just to don't have all the, the, the whole plugins each channel. So, percussions. Again here I've made, I used again the sampler of Ableton. I put the full sample in there and I used only one bit. This is this is this sound that makes the groove. This one, when whenever you hear this, it starts from the almost the beginning of the track. As soon as you start hearing the track coming in, when the DJ is mixing, it's one of the signatures of Pacer. This. So these small elements of percussions just makes the just makes the groove basically just makes the groove a bit more complex. Next, um, these are pack melodies. I have this sound here, which goes almost through entire, throughout the entire track. Again, another group, another, um, another part of the elements that I eventually, I used a different automation for it, so I make the, the whole group together. Again, these these are sounds that you you can barely hear in in the in the track, but again, they are very very effective, so makes the groove a lot better. I've learned throughout throughout um, the tracks I've made that the, the subtle changes and the subtle sounds make this make the track more more complete, and obviously those are the changes that makes it better. So, stabs and strings. I use a lot of stabs and strings in here, bringing a melodic track. I have the sounds now coming. I've used this synth line here, this synth line right here is straight, like a one synth, like this. 
like one note, root note. I've used the Moog again, just have this sound as well as part of the melody and this high static. These all make sense inside the melody section. This is the melody I created on the other arrangement, on the initial arrangement, which is this, and obviously to avoid CPU problems, I to avoid CPU problems, I bounce it into audio, and so I can have the full control. I use some reverb and echo boy again, just to create that tension for the, for the breakdown. It combines together This is a low part. This is a low part of the melody, just to have that. When, when you hear the full, the full melody during the full track, as soon as you hear, at least the, the, the melody has, has its low element as well inside the break. So that makes it, makes it more dramatic just to remove all the low frequencies from all the drums and just include some mid and low frequencies inside the, inside the melody. So let's hear the breakdown together. I started to filter in, actually filtering out the low frequencies with a filter that cuts all the the low end just to just to have that impact as soon as the as soon as the tracks the track kicks back in. I have this pad from from the from the Moog as well here that makes a good difference inside the breakdown, which is this. I've done this with the Moog, with the Moog Sub 37. I've done a full recording and I chopped the best part that fits into the breakdown. So, so far so good. Um, this is the one I explained before that stays literally and opens up the filter just for to create more attention before the, 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 the drums comes back in. I used as well in the breakdown. Obviously, nowadays they are very popular. Some drum rolls. I layered them with. I've done these with machine. I layered them with claps and snares together. I've used these. I have this sound here, which is very interesting that I echoed. I've done these with a sample and obviously I made a fade in just to create that uplifting feel.
Now, as I explained before, the small parts and the small glitches that makes the track more subtle. So here I have one perfect example that it's another, um, I think it's another signature from the track is this sound right here. Just before, just before a drop. So if you see it in con, if you listen to it in context. It's there and it's not there, but it makes, the it makes all the difference. And from it, I took, I bounced the, the echo of this sound. So I bounced this part, which stays echoing, and I created a down filter and an uplifter with it, which I create this orange, Right here is the echo filter. It's basically the same sound, but uh, it was created. So from a, from a sample that was from nothing, the sample was big like this. And I used only a small, a small part of the sample. So that makes the, that comes, if you be more creative and, in you, and you, you will find the good use of samples, so why not? You can, use, you can use samples, but obviously do it your own way. So I created more of these uplifting moments here. Like sweeps. And this, this makes the whole difference of the track. Now Drums came as I, I admit, they were a happy accident. I just placed. I want. I wanted to create a groove with the snares, in machine. So, as soon as I created the groove in machine and I exported, I exported the full loop I created in machine into Ableton. Accidentally with the mouse, I mi mispositioned the drums, so they came, for some reason, some of them, they came off. And this happy accident happens to be um, the, the signature of the track. So, but, but then I just chopped it up just to have that drummer feel um, to, for, for a more solid air groove, so. I wanted, by the end of it, I wanted, I, I wanted this sound to, to be as a, as a drummer just playing on, on the groove. So I created these small chops here. If you listen to it in, con in context, obviously everything, everything makes more sense. One thing um, very important in one of the tips I would like to give is 
not every time after after breakdown. Um, it's good to leave some space and choose the best sounds that makes more impact after the breakdown. And for a dance floor, if it works more, I feel that works more on a dance floor, even if you put just a kick and the bass line. Sometimes it's much more powerful than having the full drums back in. So from this point onwards, just to lead us for the outro of the track, from this point onwards, I had to rebuild slowly, slowly the drums again. There's the hi-hats coming back in. Some percussions. I have some glitches going on here as well, which you can hear in a minute. Like this. These sounds makes it more organic and this here these sounds make it more if you when when you listen to to the track on a full context it makes more different to overdo it with these effects because sometimes you get the, the track flooded with all, all of these frequencies. They are there just to help the attention of the track between bars. So these can be very dangerous at times as well. beginning I always start I always start um, just introducing the sounds and then obviously towards the end the sounds you get everything built up until the breakdown then after the breakdown obviously you will continue with the groove as as I've done in, in this particular track so I only have one minute left. So, anyone have any questions? Um, at this, in this particular one, I use the swing inside machine just to create, just to create the drums already uh, with the swing. When I I use the machine swing inside machine, so when I import imported everything inside the arrangements already with the swing. However, you can still, if you use the MIDI in Ableton, you can apply the swing of Ableton, and then if you warp as well the audio, you can as well use the swing inside the audio as well. But obviously, it's better to use it in, in MIDI, for, for instance, like this. I haven't used it on bass lines and other, sound, I, uh, other sounds. I only used it inside machine on the drum frequencies. It's very important, the swing is very important. It's, it's what something that I explained earlier, it's something that humanizes the, the groove. The, the snare has its swing, but obviously I retouched it with the mouse and created all the, uh, all the fields in between the, the bars. So basically I've done everything with the mouse after that happy accident, thanks to it. <laughs> Any more? Guess we're done. Thank you.